As developers, multiple environments usually mean separate code bases, which can be kind of annoying to have to maintain. But fortunately with DBT, you can simplify this by consolidating all of your environment logic in just one single code base. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how this is possible and then show you how you can implement this in your own project. So first things first, let's quickly review how DBT compiles code to begin with. Essentially at runtime, DBT is going to read through all of your files, look at your Jinja functions, your custom macros, anything else, uh, and compile your models as select statements. These statements are then sent to your database server where they're ultimately run. Remember, DBT itself does not hold data or execute the query. It's just sending the instructions over to your server to run. If you want some more details on this concept, you can check out my other video on how DBT compiles code. Now, in order to make this server connection, dbt is going to look at your profiles.yaml file. The main point here is that you have the ability to add multiple connections within this file. So this is where you can set your different environments and start to house this all in one place. So if we take a look here at our profiles.yaml, under outputs is where we store the different environment connections. So in this case, we have one for dev, one for prod. And the only difference really is that there's a different database being used. So the default for here, analytics dev, down here, analytics. For this purpose, everything else is the same. And if we look at the top, we see target dev. And what that's indicating is that the default value for this project, it's going to connect with these credentials. And you can change the names however you want. So this could be tests, this could be test one, two, three or you know, whatever, but this is the name for how you will refer to this output, which becomes more important a little bit later on. To show this in action in a very simple way, what we can do is dbt debug. And here we can see it connects to the default value of dev because we can see database is analytics dev, meaning it's using this. Now, if we want to change to prod at any point, we can do that within our command by doing dbt debug and using the target flag. And when you use this, essentially you can pick any output within your profiles and it will use those credentials. So let's say we want to use prod. We want to use this connection. We can say target prod and it will connect with this. And here we can see it's using now database analytics. Now keep this in mind because this target flag is going to be important for how we can dynamically change things and, and run different environments. Now on top of just changing how your project will connect, you can also dynamically change how your code gets compiled based on the target being used. This is achieved with Jinja and is where the real magic is going to happen that's going to allow you to use just this one project for multiple environments. So first, a simple example here, I'm just going to show you how you can change a filter condition, so a where clause, based on the environment. So let's hop over to a staging file that we have. It's a staging Avengers history. And what we're going to do is filter this based on some condition, but we're only going to do it in one environment. If we look over at the dbt docs, it's going to give us almost this exact same example. And the way that we do this is using the target.name. And again, this name is referring to the name of that output that we created. So down here in this example, we can see they're limiting a select statement using Jinja. If target name equals dev, then it's going to put this code in here uh, and you can do a lot more with it. So let's do something similar. Let's copy this. So in a similar fashion, we're going to say if the target name is dev, meaning when we run it, it's dev, which is our default. So by default, it's dev where notes does not equal NA. And just to give you a quick preview of what this looks like, if we look at the source table, some of these have NA in this notes column. So I just went ahead and ran this model and I didn't put any target indicator in here. If we look at the data, let's preview, let's find notes. And if we look at this notes column here, there's nothing with NA, meaning it got removed. And we also can see that it deployed to analytics dev because that's where the default database was for that particular target. What I'd like to do now also is show you the compiled code, put this side by side. And if we see over here, we can see it compiled it with notes not equal NA. And that's because this condition was successful. So it just dropped in that code there and compiled it. Remember, dbt is just compiling the code and it's sending it off. So now let's see what happens if we run the same command, but this time we add the target prod flag, meaning we would expect this to come through and it's going to see target name is not dev. And we would expect it to not include this because this condition would not be true. So let's see in real time, it happens right here. We can see it removed it. 
And not only did it remove it from the query, so it's dynamically changing the query, but we would expect it to deploy here, and it does, because of the target, the prod target. And if we preview here and go over to notes, we can see it's showing up again right there. So this is a somewhat simple example, but you can start to think about how you can literally wrap any part of your query with this logic to dynamically change how a query gets compiled. So not only is this possible with the SQL, but this is also doable with your YAML files. So for example, maybe you want to set a certain configuration one way in one environment, but not in another. You can follow this same process. And if we take a look again back at the notes, they're changing the database, they're adding this Jinja in here, same concept. Depending on the target name, it's going to drop in a particular value. So I copied this and put it into our source for this table. In our case, we have raw dev and then raw. That's just the way I've set this up. The only difference is in the dev, there's only 10 records. So that's what the difference will be. So now what will happen is if we run down here, if we just run this normally, it's going to run on the dev target by default. It's going to use this source and include this statement. So we should see this pop up over here. There it is. And if we go back, and here you can see the two raw databases that we're using. But now if we refresh and look at dev, we would expect only 10 records. And now we can see it's 10 and there's no NA notes over here. So now we'll go back one more time just to drive this home, target prod. And this time we would expect again for this to change, but also it's going to use the raw database. So now once this deploys, we'll have two completely different environments in play here using different source data. So this succeeded. Now take a look at analytics, which is the prod database. Now this is still using that full, all of those values and it has the NAs in here. So that worked exactly how we would expect. And there you have it. If you found this helpful, check out the full DBT playlist. And if you're brand new to DBT, consider grabbing a copy of my free DBT starter guide linked down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.